Hello, hello, and welcome everyone to In Time. My name is Nicholas Lamar Souter, and with me today is Courtney Stewart. Courtney, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. Um, my mic's working, which really came as a bit of a shock to, well, pretty much everybody. But um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, <laughs> we're doing. We're doing. I was going to ask. Yeah. I was going to ask, does anybody like like dance and rock out to the intro music? Because I really love it. <laughs> yeah, I do. well, I don't know if you can see me during the thing, but we, we hear it before we start, and I'm just like, da -da 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 -da, and it's just really fun. So I always I, have a little bit of a a dance session. <laughs> I like the music. I think we've done really well by the music, and I will tell you this too: that the um, music is uh, the it's the same person who does the music also for the after show and for. Uh, overtime. It's the same, which is why there's, mm. there's, it really sounds very, you know, it's, but we, we worked our tails off to get that, you know, and I, I'm, I'm very proud of it. So I think, uh, yeah, yeah and I, to tell you the truth, the other thing is I don't, I get a little sentimental about the credits. I get sentimental about the credits. So when mm. the credits play sometimes too, I just sort of like, even I just like listening to the music and the, and the credits, but um, that mm -hmm. is what it is. Very like epic. So, yeah. Epic music. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we uh, we've got a, a lot of really some uh, some great shows uh, coming up planned. We've got I think in two weeks, uh, Dr. Richard Carrier and Ozzy is going to be joining us to discuss history of religion. Ozzy also is actually going to be on for I think almost, it sounds like two more shows, which is which is so we're getting a lot of uh, of but it's just some great topics. Uh, you know, we're I, we're going to mm. have him on for um, the uh, philosophy series, the introduction to philosophy. He's going to be talking about uh, one of the most famous uh, philosophical problems out there, Hume's problem of induction. And then mm. um, I think we're going to have him back on. We 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 he and I were involved in a discussion on uh, transgender issues. And I, we, mm. it, it was an interesting discussion, and I, I thought as, as uh, somebody well-versed in philosophy, he doesn't actually, I think, necessarily like if you say he's a philosopher, but somebody who's, who's got his background, uh, he really had some interesting uh, takes on that from, from uh, that perspective, the perspective of language and uh, uh, sort of how we, how we deal with ontology, the existence of things and what is what is what. So... Uh, well, well, and uh, ontology actually is one we, we need to do. We did epistemology. We're going to have to do ontology at some point. Where so we're going to, we're going to have him back, and then I'm, I'm sure Landon Knoll uh, we've had on several times already. And as you know, we're doing a a series on American civics, and uh, like a lot of things, it's easy until you understand it, <laughs> and once you really sort of understand <laughs> the difference between yeah the, the the reality of of how it works versus you know how we all sort of idealize it. It's it, it's quite a, how have you how have you been liking that? series i mean this mm. is how oh i really really love it if you can tell like i get super excited throughout the stream where i'm like oh this is so interesting because i think you know something something about history and government both um i used to think that i was gonna maybe become a psychology slash history teacher mm -hmm. um and i always i always felt like i would start my um my like history introduction of a class by talking about the fact that if we learn anything in history, it's because it was important enough to make history that like Ooh. everything you learn has some, something about it. That's, that's interesting or relevant or necessary to know, or teaches us something about human nature so that we don't repeat mistakes of the past. And, and I think government is absolutely that way as well. There's so many consequences to not knowing um, enough about the government process and about your role in it. Um, and so I think both of those subjects, if you're learning something about those subjects, it's because it's important. And, um, and so I really love that about history more so than, you know, you might never use your thing that you learn in math class and English class, but at least history is like relevant. I, uh, of course, have been a student of history uh, my entire life. I teach history. I uh, teach history at the high school mm. level. Actually, I, I, I'm also certified to teach at uh, How did I not uh, know this? middle school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, well, I'm a uh, certified English and social studies teacher, and I also uh, teach computer mm. science. But the, the, the history one, but I mm. think in all of the stuff that I've, I've learned and studied uh, uh, as a student and as a teacher, I, I've never heard someone put it that way. And I think that's spectacular is that if the reason it's history is because it was worth becoming history. <laughs> I really like that. Yeah. 
Uh, how did I not? Yeah. Uh, that, that's a good one. So I've I've walked out it with something it, new. Yeah, it makes people stand yeah. up and listen, you know. I like it. I'm 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 totally stealing that one. Unfortunately, this is going out <laughs> live and being recorded, so I think I think people are going to care if I mm. if I use that one in class someday. Somebody's going to go, "Hey, Mr. Suda, I was watching your show. I get I get that on occasion." But at any rate, um, okay. Well, so uh, I, and I also saw you you really loved. We did um, uh, DC statehood. You know, uh, Washington D.C. is not a state, and uh, so how, why, yeah. what can be done about it? And it was uh, the beginning. You're like, yeah, okay. You know, it was just a halfway through, you're like, what, what now? <laughs> it was just, so, it was a lot of fun yeah. to watch. <laughs> I was Ugh. like, oh, this is really important. <laughs> like, whoa, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, and what's wonderful about Landon is that he's he's so knowledgeable, but also just really loves the topic, and and he gets excited. And so I think the other thing that's really important about um, a good teacher is somebody who really appreciates and gets excited about the material because it gets the students excited. So I remember, you know, a, a lot of my best classes in college were with professors who, you know, even if I wasn't interested in the subject coming in, they made it interesting because they were passionate about it. And so I really love that about Landon, that he makes us all understand the importance, but also it's just, he makes it really, um, really fun because he's excited. I, I couldn't agree more. That's why. So this is our, our regular series. Now, I think originally it was it was planned to be every second Thursday, and we may actually do it twice a month. I think I've, this is going to go for a while, but I'm enjoying our series. We've got we're going to be doing we have the philosophy series that I think is going to be every first Thursday. This one every second and or uh, uh, fourth, depending on uh, whether he's up for whether he can tolerate us enough. And then uh, we we also have another series uh, coming up that we're gonna. So I, I couldn't be more excited. So let's let's bring him out here. So for uh, we've had him on for a lot of this. So it's, it's still actually only our our second show on uh, uh, civics. So uh, without further ado, uh, Mr. Landon Noel. Landon, how are you? Uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on the time <laughs> zone and latitude. And it's uh, wonderful to be here with uh, Courtney and uh, Nicholas. I uh, appreciate and uh, hope. Hope the uh, audience is doing well as well. So uh, I think there's actually going to be, uh, 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 <laughs> of course, uh, a lot to discuss uh, today. Uh, one of these days we'll, we'll have a time when uh, that isn't the case, but it, it's not going to be today. <laughs> <laughs> you think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, uh, uh, today's topic is uh, civic duties and structures. So uh, mm. without further ado, if you could tell us uh, what you mean by that and uh, where we're going to start. Well, I mean, one mm. thing is that, 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 that people, you know, talk about government as being them and what they do and whether they like it or not, but really in a, in a representative a democracy that we have in the, in the U.S., where where we are, it is a representative form of government. There is a whole civic structure, and that civic structure comes with rights and responsibilities. Now, if someone goes through the process of becoming a U.S. citizen, um, you actually get, I think, a lot more educated in the process of what it means the rights and responsibilities of a citizen. I actually, explain that. I don't think that is done as uh, nearly to that degree or at all. In, in school. Um, I would recommend that U.S. citizens go to one of these swearing in ceremonies to watch them swearing in new citizens and watch them talk about the process. People that have gone through this whole this sort of process and they're now doing the final oath. And um, it's actually quite an interesting process because it, it'll teach you a bit about um, what it means to be an American citizen. Mm. Now, most people become American citizens because they're born here. I remember we talked about the 14th Amendment and, and how that uh, made that uh, situation where if you're born in the United States uh, by constitution, you're an American citizen. There's other laws that says if you're born, let's say, in a, in a uh, uh, military base overseas, you could also be automatically a U.S. citizen. But that's generally the case. But, but most people sort of become, if you will, uh, American citizens by accident of birth. And so no one gives them an instruction manual and says, by the way, mm. here's what you should be doing. And I think that that is because we don't teach it in, in, in school. I don't think people have as much of an idea about what government is and what their roles and responsibilities are. 
Um, mm. You know, when 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 the uh, delegates to the Constitutional Convention were leaving the, uh, the the hall where they had just you know set up um, and just decided that you were going to uh, establish the the cur current Constitution, uh, someone stopped allegedly Ben Franklin and asked, you know, Mr. Franklin, what form of government do we have? Do we have a, you know, they want to know, I think they were saying, do we have a, is it a, do we have a king? Do we have a democracy? Is it a republic? What is it? And, and, and uh, Franklin was bolted and said, it is a republic, ma'am, if you can keep it. Mm -hmm. Meaning they established a republic, a representative form of democracy. But it's up to you to to keep it, right? And it's up to you to. And so, one thing you say is, well, well, what are civics? What what is actual government? And then, what is your response, roles, and responsibilities? Um, and and this is something that that when people overseas are dealing with the United States and dealing with various laws, they find all of a sudden that we're a, a highly complex uh, patchwork of 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 governments. Um, we have a federal government, the United States federal government, but um, um, most US citizens also live in a state. Now, DC is one of those special statehoods, and there's also Puerto Rico and Guam and other mm. places, but, but let's talk about the states. And, and in, in a state, um, most of those states, although some are are actually called commonwealths, and that's a interesting thing in of itself, but, but the states have mm. inside them Another level of government, usually a state government where the, the the state has a governor, a lieutenant governor, they have their own sort of Congress, a legislature, and a, and, a, and, a, and often a Senate, although there's some, there's one state that just has one body. So you have state yeah. level government. And under the state, you typically the state is not just a single monolithic thing, but divided into um, counties or parishes or other terms. But 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 let's let's say the common term is county. And inside the mm -hmm. county, you might be living in a county or you might be living in a city that's in a county. And mm -hmm. then you might also have special districts such as uh, uh, schools might be in many places are a separate entity. Uh, the school district is a separate entity, a water district is a separate entity. Um, uh, you might have uh, hospitals that have special entities. So when you get your ballot, you might find that there is this thing of this odd thing about uh, uh, an odd thing about having um, you know let's say that the presidential so-called presidential election, but there's also uh, races at your state level, at your county level, at your at your city level, and other special districts. And so when someone says what are the laws here, it becomes a patchwork and, and a match of of stack of all these various various um, uh, governments. The, the, um, the thing I think that, that it's important to quite understand is that your government is not just, not just one monolithic thing. There's not one central government that manages everything. It actually is a whole cascade of, of these um, level of stuff. So in my place where I live, there's a fellow government, there's a state government, there's a county, there's a city, there's a school district, there's a wa uh, water district, and there's a hospital district and a college district. And there's members yeah. that I, you vote for up and down the line um, and that, that all have, and, and whether they tax or how they raise revenue is also uh, there. And, and it, it, it creates some interesting conflicts because sometimes the federal government might say one thing and the state says another, and the counties do another, and the city does another, and and hmm. you get have various ways to try to resolve that stuff. We've seen with the case of the current uh, pandemic that that word that if you say you get demonetized, um, and yeah. and there you know a, a a place like Australia allegedly can can have national policy, but then but in here in the U.S. Uh, the federal government sometimes will give guidance and states decide. But there are certain things that states can't do that the federal government, only the federal government can do.
And even in the state, they might say, well, we'll give certain counties uh, authority. And those counties might decide that certain cities will have certain authorities. So it, the, the, what we call civic um, is actually a stack of things. Is that, is that making sense or? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I don't I'm think not we can hearing hear Nick. Nick. Are you hearing? Sorry, I, I muted my. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Let's no no comments from anybody, please. We're we're just gonna pretend that didn't happen. Um, <laughs> so I mean, really, uh, I, the reality is, I think that you're in the U.S. You're a citizen of, and this is one thing that especially, uh, I mean, people are aware of. Uh, people have counties, you know, and, and they, they have uh, mm -hmm. in in uh, in other countries. But the idea of states that are, I mean, there's always a tension of sovereignty between our states and the federal government. Uh, they are not as free from the federal government as they would like, or as oftentimes I think they think they are, but they are much freer than many people think they are. And I, I, I when I talk specifically about the law with people from other countries, and they're like, oh, well, so what's the law in the United States regarding this? It's like, it doesn't matter. The question is, what's the law in that state? And every now and then you'll find someone's like, that can't possibly be true. If that were true, uh, a lawyer would have to get a license for every state they practice in. I was like, bingo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man, they yeah. do. Like, that can't be right. It's like, yeah, that is right. You have to pass the bar in any state you want to practice in. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. the laws are different in the states. And, uh, but is, it, is it in case that the teachers also have to be certified in the state that they, uh, they have in? It's not uh, a national? Yeah. So, well, it, well, when I got certified, which was a little while ago, the certification that I got was recognized by 36 states in the union. So I, I and uh, that certification mm. is, is still valid. So I am uh, now I don't know if other states have, have, have accepted it. And I know that some of the standards have changed. I'm certified in 36 states in the in the union. So now some states don't even need a certification for you to at least start teaching and you can get it after two or three years. Most states require that you are certified mm. in one way or another. So yeah. my certification uh, right. is valid in 36 states. So yeah. I, I think I don't know which one. <laughs> I think that's the same for counseling is, licenses too. Sure. Yeah, counselor stuff and, and, and medical, other things mm. that, 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 are, that, are, that, are, that are sometimes are state certified. Remember, you know, the constitution, said that that those powers that are not explicitly reserved for the federal government are 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 dedicated you know allocated to the states and and so um if the constitution you know, in theory the constitution does not give the federal government the power to regulate teachers that becomes a state issue now oftentimes mm. for sanity one state will say hey if you are if you're a teacher in this state, you could be a teacher in that state. An example, another example is uh, a driver's license, which is is the law deems to be a privilege in the United States. Um, you know, sovereign citizens not. Um, that's a joke. Um, mm. But but if you have a if you have a driver's license in the state of Oregon, you can drive over the border to the state of Washington and still keep driving. And and you don't have to have like a a a, a driver's license in each state. The, you have a driver's license from a state and other states agree mm. to honor that. Now, mm -hmm. if you're a Oregon resident and you move to the state of Washington, state of Washington is going to want you to pay for their license and their registration um, rather than, yeah. you know, you know, cop out on it. Oh, so so well, that, that was an issue with the, uh, I'm sorry. Well, that, that was Go an ahead, issue please. for, um, for marriage licenses of, um, of non heterosexual couples, because, um, depending on the state you, there was a, I, I'm not sure if this is still the case, but there are certain states where if you go to the, if you move to those states and you're a, um, in a homosexual marriage, then it won't be, the marriage license won't be honored there. Um, I'm not sure if that's changed federally now, but I think that was yeah. the case for quite a while of like, well, you could only be married in certain states. Um, and if you moved to the other states, then it wouldn't be recognized anymore. Well, well I, part of it is the Commerce Clause allows that stuff to, to, to go forward. And so if you, in theory, have a, you know, certain things, if you have a, a, a certificate, you know, a license to be married, and you're married in the state of Utah, the California can't mm -hmm. say, well, we don't like Utah's uh, marriage license. You have to 
be life you have yet he get married here too no they tend to have these things where mm -hmm. where it's 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 you know across but other cases like certification like you said with the bar um you have to pass a specific bar in order to be black practice law and then yeah it, to be able to practice law and then there are procedures by which you can be practice law in other states if you follow certain procedures and, well well and that and understand the, the reason why discrimination this, Yes. Yes. When particularly when the federal that, government was not, were not recognizing it was hard for one person to sue in, in the federal government. Because remember, if, if you're in the state of Oregon and the state of Washington says, no, you can't drive here because they have a Oregon driver's license, not a Washington driver's license, <clears throat> your ability to sue would be because it's because of cross, it's a cross state border thing. You'd really have to take that to federal court. So if mm. California said you can be married and these people can be married and let's say Nevada said no, um, mm -hmm. the, the issue would have to become, it would be, have to be a federal court matter that's sort of uh, above yeah. there. And that gets tricky if it's, if it's an area where there is disagreement or whether or not the federal government has jurisdiction. Right. Well, so I, I believe that, that, that makes sense. what changed. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Nick. Well, yeah. So okay, so so uh, when so I think that's what you were basically referring. So when we're talking about uh, the 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 civic duties and responsibilities of an American, there's a lot of overlap because you've got the town you're in, the municipality, the um, county, the state, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. the the and the federal government, all of whom can see things very differently uh, from each other. Is that sort of roughly what it was that you you were saying earlier, Landon? Yes, I think I think that that's a good that's a good summary. And and part of the reason for this is that there are certain things where you want the um, unique local characteristics to be to govern what happens. So one might say that a school district has special circumstances depending upon the area, the people, the culture, so forth, um, and which why school districts tend to be local, whereas something like the military is a power reserve to the federal government. That's a federal issue. Mm. Um, and of course you say, well, what about national guard? And say, well, that's actually a state thing, but, but you know, again, it gets, mm. it gets, it gets, it gets murky, but, but understand that the reason why one might have a water district, uh, being a local thing rather than a, even a county or a state or a federal is that a water district in the state of Nevada might be very, very different than a water district in uh, states such as Hawaii, um, it, because mm -hmm. of, of of just mm -hmm. just you know weather circumstances and so forth. So um, that's one of the reasons why, uh, in theory, the federal government could do everything, but then the federal government has to pay attention to all the details across uh, land. If you're a small country like Liechtenstein, which is a fairly cohesive thing. It's fairly easy to walk from one spot to another. Um, it's fairly easy to wander in and not realize it. I mean, um, there was a famous case where the Swiss National Guard accidentally uh, wandered into Liechtenstein, realized it was Liechtenstein, apologized, and realized that they had just invaded Liechtenstein and, and, <laughs> and, and apologized and left. <laughs> so mm. so there, there, are, there are places that can be small and very compact and cohesive. United States isn't one of those, mm. right? We are we, we are we are you know, a united set of states in the federal government, but even then, in a state, a state like California or Texas or or Florida has a quite a different set of regional characteristics that need sometimes regional solutions rather than even at the state level. Even the states could be too big. Mm. So, so what are some of the the uh, civic uh, duties and structures for that are larger that would affect and uh, uh, apply to all Americans, even if perhaps at a granular level there may be some differences. I mean, I I I would say again that 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 most of the time you have um, you know most most U.S. citizens have, uh, for example, certainly you know the the federal issues right uh, of things like like currency and 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 banking um are, are tend to be tend to be interstate although there are also state banks and state licenses for for banks um whereas at the state level 
you probably have things such as as driver's licenses and 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 taxes as well. Some states have taxes, some states don't. And even then in the county, you'll have additional things down below. So, so usually a person has to consider federal, state, county, and city, as well as special districts. Um, now, if you're talking about what is it that what is it that you um, what is it that 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 someone does? What are your obligations um, living in this area? Yeah. Um, I think that th there's a couple of things you can think about. First of all, um, your most obvious thing people say is that well, you know, uh, you're part of what I, what I call community problem solving. You have issues that in your community, and um, you can you can deal with those issues by contacting elected officials, right? If you have a problem with water, if you have a problem with, 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 with the garbage service, if you have a problem with schools, you would be contacting the specific government that deals with that. And this is one of the things that when you're in public office, you realize is that some people get quite confused, right? And when I was um, a city council member, I would get asked, I would have questions about, you know, foreign policy and about uh, schools and so forth. And you don't want to be, you don't want to be, you know, mean and polite, and polite, but if someone sits there and says, well, how come you're, 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 you're what, what's your foreign policy on Senegal? And I say, well, I'm a city council member and city council members are prohibited from doing foreign policy or they shouldn't, right? Um, but since you're concerned about that, and by the way, I did have somebody who asked me about Senegal, um, when I was out campaigning, I said, here's a person you should be contacting to. This is your, 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 these are your two senators and this is your Congress member. And, and they are your representatives at the federal level. Talk to them. I said, I'm not trying to pass the buck, but, but I'm not the one that, that can raise an army or, <laughs> or have diplomats and so forth. And, and it's confusing because someone sits there and says, well, I have a problem in my city. And maybe your problem is that, that, um, the infrastructure is not very, you know, is not very good. You're, you're dissatisfied with utilities. Well, some of the utilities might be regulated at the state level with state codes. Some of it might be city, some of it might be county, some of it might be power district and so forth. So it sometimes becomes hard. And so what a, what a good elected official does and their staff is to try to be a friendly point of contact. And if you're not the one, then you, have you're on speed dial with all the other levels to say, Hey, um, here's somebody that, 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 that you want. So, um, when I became mayor pro tem, one of my very first phone calls was a lady who, uh, called up, uh, it was like, like the third call she called up and she said that she wanted to turn off her utility, her, her power because she couldn't afford it. And she wanted to know if she could turn it off in the middle of the month to save money. I try to say, well, what's, you know, can you help me understand what's, you know, is there an issue? What, what is it that you're, you know, is there, is there a problem you're having? And she says, well, um, you know, I said, I turned a hundred and I guess my social security ran out and my social security checks aren't coming. And so I can't afford power. And so I go, Hmm. Okay. And so I got on the speed dial with my, I had on speed dial, uh, a uh, U.S. senator, and actually, it was not the senator; it was the senator's office. And I, and I, and I got the senator's staff to say, "Hey, here's a lady, just turned a hundred. Someone has obviously defrauded her and and redirected her um, uh, social security checks. She said she hadn't been getting them for several months. And oh, wow. and can you help? And now it turns out U.S. senators have this little fund where if you have if you don't have your your social security. The normal method, you go to security office and say, hey, I've lost them, and they do an investigation, and eventually something might happen. But senators have the ability to say, I want this person to be issued a check now at an emergency, Ooh. right, For so that they can get wow. something to happen. And so the senator in question, who is now um, retired, but his name is Barbara Boxer, um, actually the staff got her to come out of committee, come and answer the phone and say, ma'am, um, I'm, you know, having somebody deliver to you the check tomorrow. We called your oh. landlord and asked them not to evict you, and you'll get your check delivered tomorrow. Um, now, I didn't do that, but but again, as an elected official, I got the other person uh, to to go through. And again, 
the, the contact was actually not done by the by the by the actual senator. It was her staff that did it. Now I have to tell you that 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 this lady was overjoyed. She didn't she didn't quite understand well, who helped her, yeah. and so so she she credited me. And when I ran for re-election, um, she's she walked in about an eight eight block square area around her house at her walker, knocking on doors saying, "You vote for this young man because he." <laughs> You know, kept me oh. from getting thrown out of my house. Oh my goodness! Now, now well, she's a, she's one hundred and one by that point, so she's yeah, was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> she was she was she was uh, not to be determined, but but I say, and then of course, so the, the emergency check was 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 delivered by 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 you know federal, you know, uh, you know actually a federal officer, um, and then later on the the senator came by because she was up for re-election to do, you know, to make sure, cause they wanted to get something like also to make sure that she's on sort of very community aid things and having somebody help watch, you know, her, her, you know, for, for stuff. Cause again, she was a victim of, of social security fraud. And so they did, of course, the photo op. So this is the thing that <laughs> if you're asking help from an elected official, the best way to ask help is, is in such a way that when they deliver it to you, they still owe you something, right? They owe you a favor. So, so anyway, that's a, that's sort of a, a feel good story, but, but, but still that's the thing is that, it, story. It, it, <laughs> but, but you want to, when, when you contact a electric official, if you can't figure out who, um, maybe start at the, at the, at the local level and, and ask them, are you the right person again? Because it, it can be difficult to say, you know, um, my garbage isn't showing up. Well, that's probably local. Um, I have concern about uh, immigration. Well, that's probably federal. But 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 something like um, mm. license to drive. Uh, well, you know, again, asking elected officials, asking their staff to help them direct you to the right person is is the way to do it. And if you got someone who's who's got good staff as a good elected official, if they're not the person, they'll figure out who. In order to mm. to do that, it's in our city of Sunnyvale. The the people who answered the phone were were told that 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 don't say I'm sorry. You you talked to Park. You called Park and you 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 acted at Park and Rec. You need the library, right? It's it's like well, mm. let me get you a librarian to help you. You get the librarian on the phone. You explain to the librarian or well, the person's there what the issue is and transfer them, right? So you're not passing mm. the buck you're helping the person find in sort of one, they don't have to, to, to hang up and call something else. That's what good government should, should be. Now, yeah. your actual government <laughs> issues yeah. may vary. Yeah, but. your results may vary. I think, I think um, yeah, I, I, I would do a poll, actually, frankly, in, in the live chat as to how many people think that's even remotely close to, I, I, don't, need, <laughs> I don't need to do a poll. I really don't need to do a poll. So, um, yeah. Well, now we think about uh, one of the things that I, I've been interested in and I think is going to be coming up reasonably. I, I want to talk about a, a couple of different things. I want to make sure we do talk about the Supreme Court uh, before we're done. I know we're going to do our own episode. I also want to talk about also the, the more about responsibilities too, but, but please go ahead. Yeah, well, yeah. So, uh, so I don't want to do the let's, – let's hold off actually on the court until later, but I know there are a lot of people we're asking about. So we'll, we will discuss that before, before we close out today. But uh, yeah, I, for responsibilities, I don't know if you had anything specific next, but I did. I definitely wanted to mention yeah, voting. I think, I I think there's several things. Come up. Several, okay, yeah. there, several things that, that, that are your responsibilities. Certainly community, community problem solving. So contact elected officials is one of the ways you can do politically. And also at, in, in, at the ballot, one of the things you can do is to be a voter and be a regular voter. Mm. Um, understand that Let's say you're not satisfied with the candidates running for president. That doesn't mean you don't, you, 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 there's no reason to vote because there's other issues at the state, at the federal, at the state and, the, and, the, and local level. I mean, there is a famous YouTuber that I will not name who got ticked off that their favorite candidate wasn't allowed to, to become the nominee and decided not to vote even though that person had a senator to vote for, a member of Congress to vote for, a governor, um, a person, you know, the state legislature, on and on down the line, right? Understand that your voting is not just at the for the president, it's all these other things on the line. So 
you can you can contact an official to help problem solve and you can vote. Other things are volunteering. Do you realize that 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 you can volunteer in a non-election organization, right? Community organizations that 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 there are there are there are um, non-profit organizations that are you know for the benefit, you know, beneficiary stuff. And I, I think, for example, you know, our example of things like the Kiwanis Club and Rotary are examples of of organizations that are there. There are also you know chambers of commerce that you're doing with with other you know, things. So there's there's many organizations at your at your local level that you can volunteer for. They have a political voice in in dealing with the media. They have a political voice in persuading other people to to vote about issues they care about. Um, mm. There also are actual. Um, you can be an active member of a group to to participate, not just just not, not just contacting, let's say, your local uh, food bank, but volunteering for the food bank. It can be something you can do. Um, again, there certainly mm. are charities and stuff. Also, in many places in your in your local area, you have the opportunity to volunteer. And 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 I'll tell you that that that. Your your city probably has your county probably has commissions for people that do things like parks and recreation, like uh, housing and human services, um, things such as as uh, the library might have a you know you have a library board, and and other other things the planning commission, um, so forth. Uh, there are opportunities to to volunteer as a as a commissioner to do a lot of, you know, work on a lot of the, a lot of the details. So if you like libraries, look to see if you've got a library board you can volunteer for. Um, if you're interested in, in uh, planning and, and permits, there's probably a city planning thing. If you like, if you like parks and, and, and so forth, you want to be I, 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 I'm gonna, concerned I'm gonna, about parks, I'm volunteer. Gonna I'm going to interrupt. If you're into planning and permits, planning maybe, how many people are into permits? Just as a just well, as a, people who are in the building trade are, are quite there. People who do outdoor landscaping are actually quite involved in 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 permits and I, I, those sorts of things. I'm busting your chops. I and, just and, have and to bust so, your chops. And so, I and just, someone I sits there and says, "I can't and, and, not bust your chops." I'm sorry, I have to do it at least three times a show. So disruptive, now. <laughs> but but, <laughs> but but understand. Sorry, if, if, sorry, if ma'am. You are ticked off. You sit. If you, I, I see Nick, I can tell Nick that you've had some run-ins with. With permits and building permits and so forth. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, um, there's a few stains on. One that. of the answers, Nick, is to become part of the process, not a victim of the process. And this is what I'm talking about. Mm. Right? Listen, I if, love to if, volunteer. If, I volunteer, if, Courtney, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Courtney, for, for, for being such a good volunteer. Um, but but this is this is a thing that and there. And there are also special commissions that are going on, on there. I mean, um, at the state, they oftentimes will will have special commissions where they hold and 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 for example, right now in in our state, um, because a lot of people are working from home and they're thinking about schools and 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 schooling from home, um, they are mm. concerned about those students and those uh, workers who have internet issues. That are not allowing them to fully participate in schools and, and, and in their job. And so there's a special commission that's being formed to, to look into it. Don't count on the state legislature and the government to know about stuff. If you understand networking and you understand application, you understand uh, technology, volunteer. You know, mm. you, you might find, in fact, that these commissions have. You know, there's waiting for people to to be interested in applying. If you have some mm -hmm. level of, of interest, um, volunteer, right? It it you can make a, a significant difference, um, even as a as a volunteer for one of these boards or commissions. Um, of course, the other thing is that you have an opportunity to run for office, right? It, I it, was it, waiting it, for you, you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> and and yeah. you know, it was it was as a as a library board member, and I'm not my chair, I realized the city council holds the purse strings that was key to the library. And so I decided, well, let me run for city council. Um, and 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 happened to happen to win and uh, serve there. But again, 
Um, that's a thing. And I think that's part of the thing is that, that you, Sorry. you can we, 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 we have a snark, we have a snark in the live chat and I just, I, I, <laughs> Wait, the mods are the mods are going to get on him. He uh, Daryl Frost quote. Yeah, I want to be part of. Yeah, the but problem. you can you can be, you can be part of the problem, right? That that's that's man, that's, man that's after that's my the, own heart. The, the thing yeah. is, uh. <laughs> and you know, I, I I like the fact that that particularly at 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 running for office at the local level, um, you are you are much more answerable to your constituents because you're there, you're living there, mm -hmm. you're 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 in amongst us stuff. And and it's a great way to to um, you know um, get involved. But again, um, you I would I would say I'd start off by by contacting your city or county or both to ask them are there boards and commissions to volunteer for? And they'll say, oh sure, because guess what? Most people don't volunteer. They have they have they have often they have these boards where there's vacant seats and they can't find someone to fill it. So if you have an interest in it. Mm. I, I, there's there's a good opportunity you could you could you could volunteer and that gives you a little bit of 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 a um a interest interest into participating and then i realized well i can do more than just volunteer i can actually file papers and run and if the people liked me then i get to serve for 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 a period of time right that was the that's kind of the process involved mm. um you don't have to make it you don't have to make a life career you don't have to become a career politician you are a lifetime member of where you live, right? You are always living someplace. You're always some spot. Mm. And so you have a community that you can serve volunteer wise, commission wise, elected wise. Mm. Um, you know, it's, it's part of your, you can be part of your civic duty and, and it can be, it can be quite a, quite a fun ride. Well, I can imagine. And I, I, I think there's, uh, it's it's got to be very rewarding to be helping your community, and I have to admit, I do I do like the idea of being able to help shape things. It's the the being held accountable part that I just really don't like too much about it. I, I you know yes. just like <laughs> that's that that's that, that's yeah. an issue. But you know yeah, it also means nah, I can hold other like I feel so accountable too because I've been there done that. But <laughs> but it is it is a case where where um you know for myself one of the biggest hurdles i had to overcome was a willingness to vote for myself mm. and i say what do you mean? right i mean nick you know and you don't have to answer but but our courtney would you vote for yourself for mayor of your town think about that i mean i'm not saying oh i'd like to be mayor no mm. would you vote for yourself knowing who you are would you vote for yourself? And that's one of the honest things you have to think about if, mm. if you're running for office. That would be one of my first things. Um, another thing, of course, I yeah. would I would say is is check out the oath of office, right? And because uh, that's the thing in my oath of office, it was I swallow your firm to uphold and defend against all enemies, foreign, domestic, the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of California, and the City Charter of the City of Sunnyvale. To the best of my abilities that was my oath right and so mm -hmm. that meant you have to learn about the federal constitution and the you state constitution to, yeah, and the city just, charter yeah mm -hmm. i mean you're going to swear an oath to defend it you better know what you're defending right that's that's one of the things but yeah, but if yeah, you're yeah. if you're just volunteering for park and rec um well take a tour of this of the of the parks and in fact you can volunteer and ask for as a citizen a tour and they'd be happy to show you around mm. This is interesting. Uh, I can because tell like, you that I once you it, get into it, is really interesting. Go ahead, please go ahead. Well, it's, it, it, I was just going to say that there's, there, like you said, there is an idea of when you think of government, you think of those people at the top in Washington D.C. and like you, you think of the corruption of money in politics and and you know the fact that a lot of things don't get done because neither side wants to work with each other out of principle and so you think of government in that sense as a far away entity that's like very far removed from everyday life that we live you know people that are mentally and emotionally very far removed from the lives that most of us yes. live and uh and so what's interesting is to think of the government in that more local sense of people who are living more normal lives and and dealing on more ordinary issues and um, 
and budgets, you know? Well said. Um, well said. And that's Courtney, yeah. That's why I would say at the local level, particularly, it's easier to have connections and have that yeah. to see the results and to be part of it as a volunteer, as a commissioner, or as, a, as an elected official. It's, it's much more immediate there as you get higher, higher up or down, depending on how you, how you look at the pyramid, um, yeah. it, it become, you become more and more removed <laughs> on it. And well, I, 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 I think laugh, that's why but, but I, I, so... I regard the citizens yeah. as the top of the pyramid and regard the yeah. president as the bottom of the pyramid. He's, this, he's the servant of, of the people. He's not the mm -hmm. Lord High, you know, mucky muck and, and, and king. He's the bottom of the pyramid, right? Yeah. And serving everyone else. So when I was on a city city council member, I had 150,000 bosses I had to answer to. Right? As you get mm. as you as your territory gets larger and larger, you have more and more responsibility and answerable to more and more people. That's why start mm. off locally. You can do a lot. Mm. And and I could I can say that when I left office, I had an 83 percent approval rating. There was more money in the <laughs> bank in the city office than when I started. There are a few <laughs> I, laws I was waiting to see if you were going to add that last part of it in the bank of the city office. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, good. Yeah. Oh, and sorry. Yeah. And there are fewer laws in the yeah. book. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and, and I also was, there's another thing. Uh, uh, see whether the elected official is a capable of admitting mistake and apologizing for those mistakes. We're human. Mm. Some of us, maybe Nick, not Nick, <laughs> make mistakes. Yeah. Listen, uh, listen. I, I I make plenty of mistakes, Landon. In fact, right now I'm kind of trying to figure out why I, how I do my vetting process for guests. But well, I'll, I'll, I'll don't worry. I'll be reviewing that a little later in the show. I, I but, did have to uh, please finish, and then I have a, a thing. A thing I want. I was going to say, please. you know, when I, when I you know when I left office, you know, I I went and and said, here are the mistakes I made that I apologize for. I wish I you know did different. And I said, and I, and I encourage people saying, the people that come after it, ask them what mistakes they've made, how they corrected it, and, and whether they have apologized for, for that. This is probably one of the biggest problems I have with a certain somebody in the federal government, is a person who seems to be incapable of admitting that they've ever made a mistake, let alone apologize. Mm. Never vote for yeah, somebody yeah, who point. says they're perfect, or behaves like they're perfect, and is capable of apologizing. Because you're human, you'll make mistakes. Yep. Learn from those mistakes. Mm -hmm. Don't keep repeating them. Yeah. So that's my one of my advices for that. But as and I say, it is it is yeah. absolutely and and then then at, but but yeah. if you do volunteer at the local level, you get connections to to the state and other people, and 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 those connections mm -hmm. can continue going forward. So I still have people who will call me and ask me and say, "Hey, blah blah blah, I have a a child that wants to get into West Point. What do I do?" And say, "Well." Here's so and so, and do this, and here's so and so, and do this, and so forth, and get them a connection. And I, and I try to tell them, talk to the staffers, right? If you want to be have a, a have a letter of recommendation for something like that, it's not the it's not your senator or congress member that's going to start. It's going to be their staff member that's going to recommend to the congress member that let's 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 do this thing. So so you, you get those connections mm. even in your volunteering, and 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 learn basically build your Rolodex, you can actually continue to help people along the way. Well, and I was uh, going to say that the the story you told, the, I think the reason it made me so emotional, and I think a lot of people my age and younger would be emotional about that, is that, is that I really don't see the government as something that directly helps people, especially that quickly, and and has that, that amount of, you know, involvement and heart. Um, yeah and like benign intent that, you know, you don't really think of the government in those terms, especially not in the last, you know, several years. So it, it's very encouraging that, you know, there's a, a part of the government that is widespread, that is actually interested in being a legitimate representative of the people. I, and that it's well said, a way that Courtney, can well said. affect them so directly. Because, yeah, because it is, you know, Again, I think when when you don't have a lot of education on the lesser known parts of the government, you do see the government as something that is very callous and and doesn't care about individuals. It's all about special interests and, and can be. and yeah, 
Yeah, and it's but, really but, scary. But guess what? You you have special interests, right? So you say you're in counseling. So I suspect that there is a special mm -hmm. interest group dealing with counseling and 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 how it's regulated at the federal um, uh, state and, and local level, right? And there are groups mm -hmm. that you can volunteer for that help there are special interests on that specialized to understand counseling and all the particular needs. And, they, and, and, and you don't expect a Congress member or a state Senator to understand everything about counseling, mm. let alone 1% of it. So instead mm. you're probably is at some sort of association for counselors that helps them understand the issues. And if something comes up, that will affect counselors, you want those special interest groups, your special interest group mm. to be part of it. So volunteering for an organization like IEEE if you're an engineer or or um, if, if you are, if somebody who is in, you know, if you're into boating, right? There there are special interest groups dealing with regulating of of, 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 of boating and, and, and so forth at the federal, state and local level. Mm. So you can participate in those special interest groups and express your special interest. Also, I would say my experience in dealing with with elected officials at the from from the from the you know, executive branch of the federal government on down is there are very few devils, very few saints. Mm. Most of them in, are in the middle as as humans that that are that are trying to do the right thing. You may disagree on what the right thing is, but they're they're they're, they're generally trying to do the right thing. And and yes, mm. we hear about the extreme. On, on on one side, the really bad stuff. Because and and by the way, there are some really genuinely amazing people in government that you don't hear about mm. because they're not a they're not they don't produce good good uh, drama and father. But but again, I think there are very few really evil people and really sane people. Most of the people sit in the, in the middle. And yes, there are some people mm. that I would not vote for that I don't think would be fit for office. Fortunately, those people are, are relatively few. Most of the time, I think they'll try and do the right thing. So, so if you don't like the government you have, I would say one, do something about it. Volunteer, contribute, write, and, and learn how to write a letter, right? Um, uh, I know that people like to do email and you click on these forums saying, you know, uh, change something or other, and I, I, you know, sign some electronic petition, and that will show them, right? I tell you what, mm. if you write a handwritten letter that's coherent mm. with a cover letter to your senator, you will have more power than ten thousand change me online petition people, right? Here's mm. here's a very important tip for 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 how when you're writing to a, an official, put a cover letter on it. And the cover letter needs to have in one or two sentences, executive summary, what is your issue? Recommended action, one or two sentences. And then, you know, as part of your recommended action saying, see the following attached information for more details. So if you need to put a book to have details about, let's say, let's say something dealing with, um, uh, you are a, a, uh, a car enthusiast and you want you like to restore old cars and there's some problem about licensing old cars because your state has some car registration thing. You have to have airbags and so forth, but the model T doesn't have airbags. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and you want to get that fixed. Right. Um, mm -hmm. the, the way that you do is you don't sit there and give them a 10 page treaties on, on historic cars, put mm -hmm. a simple cover letter that's saying executive summary, uh, Historic cars don't fit the normal vehicle registration inspection process. Mm -hmm. Recommended action. Um, contact the association for uh, 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 car restoration for information about um, particular laws that can exempt historic cars and see the attached material. Thank you very much. Name, mm -hmm. address, so forth. So that, why is this? Because because a staff member who gets all these letters and so forth can look at it and say, Ah, what is this? They, you want to, just mm -hmm. like a web page, you want them to be able to, in mm -hmm. a couple of seconds, say, what is your issue and what do they need? What needs to be done about it? Mm -hmm. And and mm -hmm. then they will catalog you to say, you're, you, are, you are a car enthusiast and you want to make it easier for people to do for car restorations and be able to drive those cars on streets and this is an important issue for you. And, mm -hmm. and by the way, you that handwritten letter, 
will to be more powerful than a 10,000 signature things with E, this and that so forth, right? Because they know you took the time and you didn't waste their mm. time. You were very efficient and you delivered some useful mm -hmm. material. And again, don't expect the entire world to change, but, but once you've done that, if there's more information, you can follow up later with a, another, again, very, very short cover letter that they can in a few seconds mm. see what is your issue. Um, Social Security mm -hmm. benefits, recommended action, um, make it easy for for people who are elderly to not have to, to, to be able to avoid fraud, you know, uh, Social Security fraud. Uh, and then you have some mm -hmm. if you have some more detailed stuff, add that to them so they know what you're there. Guess what? Pretty soon mm -hmm. when you're writing these coherent letters, they will become to see that you're one of those experts, one of those people that are are um, you know involved in this area that you become the you being one of those subject matter experts. So if there's a legislation coming yeah. up where they're regulating um, um, historic automobiles, um, mm. the staff will see this coming on the docket for the for the for the Congress member. Go into a file and say, mm -hmm. "Oh yeah, Courtney, she wrote to us about this stuff. Let's mm -hmm. look at what Courtney says and maybe even give her a call and ask her some questions, right? Mm -hmm. For stuff." Yeah. Again, That's most people don't take the time to write a simple letter. And by the way, um, mm. writing thank you letters to the staff is also a really good way of getting them to, to, mm. to like you, right? So, so even if you're angry about something, right? If you if you are upset about how the police are being treated, um, mm. a, a cover letter talking about you know executive summary. I am concerned about the historic attitudes of our police department. Recommended action. And, and let's say your recommendation action is to, 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 to change the training of police officers in our, in our city. Mm. And you have some attached material of stuff you want to add to it, but, but they then know mm. what you're concerned about, that you're coherent, mm -hmm. that you're a potential source. And guess what? They'll look mm -hmm. at your material later. And sometimes they'll even write you back. And sometimes they'll even actually incorporate some of your language in the laws, right? It, it, it is, it, yeah. you, you can, actually volunteer information and help your elected mm. officials figure out what to do. Well, cool. this, okay. So right. I want to hit a, a, I want to try to hit a, a couple of remaining topics. We had sure. one question that I thought was, was worth hitting. And first of all, yeah, no, I, I, um, I did, I, you know, I, I did campaign work for a little while and I'm, I'm actually a little more emboldened about maybe running for office. Cause I do think I can meet that one criteria. I have no problem. Uh, with uh, Landon apologizing for my mistakes. But um, <laughs> somebody had asked. Because um, right now it's my job. But if you say sorry, <laughs> you have to say trademark Canada. Yes, right now it is Courtney's job. That's true. But Courtney, you have to admit, you know, I don't make you work all that hard at it. I mean, come on. How often yeah. have you really I had to? It's just like she only has to apologize for six or seven mistakes per three minutes on the show. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Very good. Anyway, so, so please uh, so, go ahead. Uh, well, there was a, there was, there was a, so I, I know we want to cover voting. We want to cover the court and I, we may be able to sort of segue at least into voting with this one. Cause there was a, there was a very interesting question about, uh, are there any, uh, do policymakers need any relevant credentials for the job? And I do want to hear your take on this and why it was mm. set up the way it was. But what, what I find, Lewis Black did a, a spectacular uh, bit on this. I've always loved Lewis Black. He's a comedian, for those of you who don't know. Mm. And um, he did this mm -hmm. comedian about, you know, what, what, what's great about this American democracy is that anyone can run for president. What's terrible mm. about this American democracy is that anyone can run for president. Yeah. And he, they talked about Jesse Ventura, who, of course, uh, uh, was governor of California. He had been a, um, uh, a wrestler. No, Minnesota. Oh, oh, Minnesota. You're right. Minnesota. It was Minnesota. I, I was thinking, yeah, okay, so Minnesota. Thank you. We had Schwarzenegger. Uh, yeah, yeah, you guys had Schwarzenegger, who I thought at least was actually uh, Schwarzenegger was certainly more qualified, I think, than than uh, Ventura when he started. But Ventura basically went from wrestling. I think he did take some time off. It was like, shouldn't he have been like a secretary or something else that was at least administrative before um, becoming <laughs> governor? But no. And uh, the the actually the the irony is, 
to be vice president, all you really need, if I recall, the only actual requirement for vice president is that you have a heartbeat. That's about it. For a president, there are a few other requirements, and I think there's a de facto understanding that you should have to meet the uh, presidential requirements in yeah. case you have to become president. But it's actually not – not you, <laughs> the requirements so, aren't so, there. So, so, so as, vice pre as vice president, you cannot reside in the same state that, the, that your president, president does. And the second thing is that you have to be able to 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 fulfill the obligations and, and duties of the office of the president. So you have to be a um, natural born citizen. You have okay, to be so of do age, have age. Okay, right. um, and you, you have to be willing to swear the oath. Or older. Yeah, and you have to yep. be willing to swear the oath because if you don't swear the oath, then you don't get to be president if, if so, you're in the office. But, but, but so at the now, local level as well. You know, the question is, well, what do you need to be in order to to do that? I understand that that elected officials have staff members that are the often the real experts. Mm -hmm. well, so how many members I of was Congress at a state council member having to deal with legal. Yeah. Well, Boy, but 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 that's because they're about? complex. So. <laughs> I'm sorry, 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 sorry. Well, I just I, uh, famously, uh, most members of Congress don't read most of the legislation. They'll, they'll they they have staff members who read it and then explain it to them. But there's just too much legislation and it's too big. They don't read it, so they don't usually know really what's yeah. in it. Uh, but at any rate, I apologize. I, I think you were. Um... But I was saying that's that's the thing is that 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 staff members help you as an elected official understand the issues and do the research for you. And so when I was on, you know, as a council member, for example, if there were legal issues, because I was not a lawyer, I had people in the city attorney's office that I could sit down with and ask questions, right? Um, when I came, when it came time to deal with things such as the, the power grid, um, I, you know, I reached out, you know, I said to staff members, who are the experts in, in power grids? And I got you know, introduced to IEEE has has a particular subsection on um, things with power grids. There also was an association for that that set. I also had contacts with utility companies, and I had access to 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 retired people that worked on on a power grid and 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 got. And you actually then say, well, let's hold some public hearings to have people come in and explain the issues to us. Right? You you hear the public, and you make. But but as an elected official, you make decisions because you gather input and make a decision based upon a regime you, you seek. Um, and, and if you are, if you are in a, oh, so, so let's say you're, you're, you volunteer for a park and rec commission. Um, you should at least be interested in parks and recreation. And the second thing of course, <laughs> is that when you become, if you, if you get appointed, you'll have, there'll be a staff member assigned to the commission that will assist you. And you, by the way, though, you'll find that there's a regional association of park and rec commissioners and other organizations that will help you provide your material, as well as the fact that you've got this committee to go around and talk to them about parks, right? And say, hey, I've been appointed to the park rec commission. Tell me what you think, um, you, 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 what do you think we should do? When I ran, first ran for public office in the city of Sunnyvale, um, I walked the entire city myself. Um, I knocked on every door where someone had voted in three out of the last four elections. So I, lock, I knocked on about uh, almost 50,000 doors in their city and talked oh. to people. I said, I would say, hello, my name is Landon Knoll. I'm running for city council. Here's some information about mm. me, and I'd like you to consider voting for me. And then they had questions. Mm. And, and that was really great training because by the time it came to the candidates debate, I had heard just about every question hundreds of times and understood what was there. Mm. I could speak authoritatively to what the community was saying because I listened to them, right? That was that was the thing. Mm. And so if you are into, um, let's say, community heritage, because oftentimes a community might have a heritage um, or thing we're talking about the historical society. Well, um, you can volunteer for that. You can, and there's there, there are historians that will help you get information, the staff get you information. I think the most thing is you want to be enthusiastic and you want to care. And then you want to mm. make use of resources that are available to you. And then listen to the public. I was, it was right, you know, builders found me to be very frustrating to deal with in some ways because I would always say, I will not commit to having voting until we have the public hearing. What do you mean? I mean, this is obvious. You should vote for this thing because da, 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 da. yes. And I'm I'd be happy to I'd be happy to take your input. 
at the public hearing, I'm going to mention, I met with Vitovich developer and they gave me this information. So whatever you tell me, I'm going to also express at the public hearing. And if you happen to be there and mm -hmm. I make get it wrong, you can correct me, right? But I'm not going to make a decision until I've heard from the public. Why? Because I was voted, the public is my boss and I'm asking them to mm. give me information so that I can make a decision. So, oh, so, Landon, no, you're um, one of my favorite people. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it was, it was, awesome. and it meant that we sometimes had meetings that ran to two in the morning because uh, they had a lot of people who wanted to mm. express their thing. But hey, you know, that's, 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 uh, the, the point is that, 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 that even if you're volunteering, let's say at your local, local community food bank and you're dealing with, 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 with hunger, um, that mm. gives you an opportunity to see unique perspective on that problem. Now you can start writing to your elected officials, those efficient letters or the cover letter that says executive summary, I'm concerned about <laughs> community hunger amongst young children, recommended action, mm. um, support food banks getting in touch with people that the police discover are in trouble, right? Don't, don't sit there and say, here's a vagrant and, 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 and get rid of them. Contact the community charity people right then and there so they can come in and take immediate action, right? And, and so you, 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 mm. you put that in a nice cover letter and then you have some details about your organization and so forth, but, but it becomes efficient. They can see in a couple of seconds what to do, what you're asking for, and you can be effective. And if you keep, Doing that sort of thing, mm -hmm. you become the expert on on taking care of 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 the hungry. You can might even decide to become volunteer in your local food bank. You might even decide to try to volunteer as a commissioner. You might even want to run for office and and use that use your experience as one of the things you want to to deal with, something that people want to vote for you. Mm. All right, so let's. Um... Uh, I think I think maybe another 10 or 15 minutes if if that works for you guys so we can sort of try to figure out how to budget that time I, I think there are a couple other topics we did want to hit I know we definitely do want to uh, cover some of the well the most recent uh, Supreme Court rulings so uh, Landon would you like to cover that or was is there something else mm. you'd like to hit first what, what yeah I, I would what say would I like mean, there, there, were there any was there any uh, questions from the chat room as well as far as as stuff they're they're, they're being very snarky but, right now and I, I really I've had a out as much as I'm going to tolerate from from, but, from but, our you know, the, at the, the present the, moment. I would say the Oregon Historical Society is actually worth a visit. Um, I oh, you, oh been, you're listening I to what been... they're actually saying. Oh, no, no, no. I would not. I would. I would advise against. <laughs> I would advise against <laughs> any really... interaction with this chat. Uh, they're clearly a bunch of troublemakers. I have a suspicion. I understand why. I I will. I will deal with the problem. Yeah. There's a really creepy clown in there. Yeah. There is a really creepy clown in there. But I'd really, I asked you to stop calling Tony that, and if you could, if you could at least on air, not refer to Tony that way, I would appreciate it. We'll, 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 yeah. I'll, I'll have a chat with him. But yeah. So anyway, um, uh, so we wanted to, to, to in, in, so if there's any other question, we can talk just briefly about the Supreme Court and what they did today to help people understand. Perfect. Perfect. Um, All right. So yep. So, yep. So, so the thing, the Supreme Court handed down a number of decisions, right? And, and by the way, um, it, 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 there's, there's more decisions the Supreme Court made than just the stuff about, about Trump, right? That, that, I know that, the, I know that most <laughs> of the media is fixated on, on that part, but there is I don't a, think I've heard about this at all. Fairly, there's a fairly significant ruling regarding mm. tribal lands in Oklahoma. Oklahoma was okay. set, was originally des described was called the Indian Territory. It was a it was a mm -hmm. it was a section above Texas where they said, well that's where the Indian tribes can can live. Uh, they can have their own homeland there and and they actually established a treaty mm -hmm. with with multiple multiple tribes. And and the most of the eastern half of that is now the state of Oklahoma was was designated as as tribal homeland. Mm. Well, when the state of Oklahoma turned from Indian territory to became an actual state, one of the things that they they did was they said, "Well, we're a state. We don't have anything to do with those those treaties." Sorry, right? Um, second thing, of course, in the federal government on the on top of that, noted that the 
that the Confederate army had convinced certain local Indian tribes to support them in the fight against the federal government. The Indian, you might imagine that certain Indian tribes had a bad taste for the Union Army and what they did. So the Confederates could have said, hey, we're trying to kick them out, so help them. And so in a sense, what happened was the federal government then saw the, the, the Indian nations there as being Confederate troublemakers. So when Oklahoma kicked them out and said no longer there, um, they were, they, 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 it was a really terrible thing that happened. Well, um, mm. what the Supreme Court said was, no, the treaties the federal government made with those Indian nations still stand. You just can't, they, mm. the state of Oklahoma, when it formed, couldn't just eviscerate federal treaties. Those treaties are still valid. Mm -hmm. and, and as a result, there's a good chunk of Oklahoma that actually is still allegedly governed under those treaties. Mm -hmm. They're tribal land. Mm -hmm. um, this was a this was a decision that people you know wanted to know how the Supreme Court was going to go because it really it really had a a a profound effect on this but but this has also established some really significant things where the Supreme Court said those treaties that the U.S. often broke with those Indian nations mm -hmm. they're valid treaties. You just can't say, ah, oh, well, you know, back then, da, 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 and mm -hmm. state of Oklahoma became a state, and so the Indian Territory, we don't care, da, 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 da. And said, no, 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 those treaties are still in effect, and you just can't dismiss them out of hand. Now, what does that mm -hmm. mean? We don't know, because obviously there's there's a bunch of people that live in that, 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 Eastern half of that at the half section of you know, the state of Oklahoma that say that's our property. And there's a bunch of treaties that say this is belongs to these various nations. A bunch of stuff is going to start to have to happen to figure out how to detangle it. But, but the Supreme court said those tribes have standing. They can sue under those treaties. We just got to got now got to figure out how to, and take a look. So, so well, that, Indian that really land, is Indian reservation that's takes pretty, a that's swath of, wow. Oklahoma, yeah. of, of Oklahoma. It, it really is. It really is a five, four, four decision. It was a, it was a four, four decision. Cause, cause we had a, 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 a previous, we, we had a uh, justice who, who recused himself, but, but that was resolved. And so, um, it, it sort of declared that, that, so the specific thing was on on the swath of the state near Tulsa, as part of Muskegee uh, Creek Indian Reservation, and has has mm. implications for criminal cases, taxes, uh, and, and and regulation. Right, the the issues about about what oil pipelines and so forth that that they have uh, they have the right to. So so that was that was there are five tribal territories that comprise about the the latter somewhat third eastern third of the state of oklahoma mm -hmm. that um those treaties actually stand and tulsa is is in the middle of the whole thing and um you know something's gonna happen right tb so to be determined you but this hmm. were you okay. saying that this had something to do with trump as well well, I'm saying that, that there are another you know, I mean, Trump, another uh, ruling. On, yeah, I don't think I think Trump oh, was okay. the, the 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 big thing that, that for the Trump ruling was was that the the you know there is there is a you know as 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 Justice Gorsuch wrote on this thing on this thing he said the on the far end of the trail of tears was a promise. If you don't know what the mm. trail of tears is, look it up. It's one of the nope. real yep. tragedies. That is in America, yep. and and it and 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 you have the Supreme Court, one of the one of the three branches of the federal government, saying at the far end of that trail of tears was a promise, and that promise mm -hmm. still stands. It's still a valid treaty, and and and, and that 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 mm -hmm. Congress since has broken um, more than a few of these promises of the tribe, and we hold the government to its word. 
is what the decision said. Mm -hmm. So wait to see. Now, this is the problem that happens that when you get a decision, it doesn't mean, okay, it's done. It's not like the person is guilty mm -hmm. or innocent and that's it. <laughs> it, it there's going to be a whole bunch of other decisions saying, oh, therefore what? Right? The, before what would happen is someone could come in and say, hey, this treaty of, let's say, the, the Creek Nation says I get to do this. And, and judge would say, but mm -hmm. that treaty, no one cares about that. Now the court says, yes, you have to take and count that treaty. Does that mean mm -hmm. everyone loses their land? No, it means that, that now that stuff, those other issues will be tried. Because there's a person who was arrested under tribal laws and said, could they be mm -hmm. tried under tribal laws or they had to be tried under state laws? Well, mm -hmm. those treaties have something to say about that. And the courts now have to consider those mm. treaties as part of the process. Um, of course, the big so thing does today. That, does that, that make a about... change? Sorry, does, does that make a change for things like Standing Rock? Uh, I think it has implications because because the courts didn't say in this ruling they did not say this only applies to this one nation, right? Mm. Yeah, that was what, what the yeah. court said was the federal government made a promise in a form of a treaty, that treaty is valid, that treaty has not been rescinded, and therefore the courts have mm -hmm. to take into account that treaty in, in considering cases. So the answer is that, that the, and, 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 the, and the court came down, you know, even though it's a federal decision, it came down pretty clear and said, you know, the, the mm -hmm. federal government has to be held accountable for the treaties it signed to the mm -hmm. nations that it signed it to. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so 34 states in the union have reservations in them, so re federally recognized yes. reservations. Now, um, yes. here's the thing, and we had discussed that this is interesting because this ties back to D.C., because technically those reservations also are not U.S. <laughs> well, so D.C. is not a state, but it is in the U.S. Those reservations yes. Yes. actually are not in the U.S., uh, it, depending on how you define in the U.S., I suppose, because there's but, or or uh, they're they're under the control of the U.S. but not as control of the state. That, that's that, a, well, that's a, this is one of the things that the courts have to decide. Because well, because so here's mm -hmm. the thing. So for example, in New Mexico, there's a there's a freeway that goes through the Isleta um, reservation in New Mexico. When the Isleta tribe now, first of all, that's mm -hmm. why there's gambling. Why they can have even in a state where gambling isn't allowed, you can have it on a reservation right. because the reservation is its right. own its own territory. But uh, so is Leda, mm -hmm. whenever they are in negotiations with the state and they don't like what the state's doing, they shut down that freeway between the Isleta tribe and the nearest way around it is, I think, like a 26 mile, you know, you actually have to go wow. all the way around the tribe. And the the, the government, the, the state government cannot force them to open it because it is their land. It is not the state mm -hmm. land and it's not even the federal land. So mm -hmm. um, there's so with 30, I, 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 sorry, I think I said 36, it may have been 34. 34 states that have these reservations, which technically aren't, aren't U.S. land. They are within the United States, but they're not U.S. land. Um, it sounds to me like this would give all of them, not just the, because this is a precedent. We talked about, uh, I think I, yes. I think it was with you, we talked about the difference between how laws here work on precedent. So it's uh, yes. the, the mm -hmm. precedent is going to apply not just to them, but to just everyone yeah. because of the common law system. So uh, my, mm -hmm. my, I guess my question is, and I think you started to answer this, is how likely is this to affect those other states? And what happens if they're, I mean, I, I I can foresee some some pretty significant issues coming up if you go back a hundred and a hundred and fifty years for well, well because trees because, that are now absolutely yeah because yeah. because the part of the thing is they said is is that 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 Kagan said um, forced to leave their ancestral lands in Georgia and Alabama the Creek Nation received assurances that the new lands in the West would be secure forever oh dear mm. lord okay. Okay, and and so and now now you now what and again that they think wow. they said you have to honor these treaties. So if you are if you're Navajo, if you're Cherokee, if you're Choctaw, if you're any of these other you know, Tomac, these these other nations, you better believe mm -hmm. their tribal elders have their lawyers on speed dial saying, mm. "Let's go to the courts," and you're going to see this whole bunch of stuff. And so I suspect what will wow. happen is there'll be in some cases that there'll be a disagreement where the courts now have to consider these tribal treaties. And 
and mm -hmm. it'll bubble up and the Supreme Court will have to give further assistance. Now understand, this thing happened because when, when Oklahoma was admitted to the Union in 1807, they discovered, you know, basically that 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 the creek uh, joined its 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 second most populous city, Tulsa, right? And you had Native Americans being prosecuted in Oklahoma State's courts that were began to contest or things saying, "Hey, I'm a member of, of of the Creek Nation. Who are these Oklahomans trying me for something?" And they said, "Yeah, well, we're a state, and so you know, go pound sand." Um, and so. And so they, they, they argue that only that, 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 that the residents of the Indian reservation can only try, try it in federal court, right? That if you have a state, because just like if, if you know, a state reaching into your state, another state reaching into your state has to be done at, at, at the federal level. You can't have the state of Alabama deciding to arrest you because you live in, 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 in uh, Oregon and you violate an Alabama law. Mm. That becomes a federal issue. Mm -hmm. So what they're saying is that these these people that are in these tribal lands that have treaties of this nature of their nature have standing. You can you can no longer say ah well you know we don't care about those treaties. The court says you better care about those treaties. And so this has implications mm -hmm. across the land. And by the way, that's significant things in in the state of Hawaii. Uh, one of the first things that Obama Obama did as president was to recognize Hawaiians as native people. Um, and, hmm. and in the state of Hawaii, there's been all this issue about Hawaiian native rights versus whole, you know, US citizen rights and, and back and forth. So there's a whole bunch hmm. of things that, that come into uh, to play. Now, this, isn't, this, this Supreme Court case doesn't say you got to throw the, all, everyone off the land and, and leave it to these nations, right? Yeah, but that, yeah. Those, <laughs> Those Sorry, issues but... have to be resolved in courts and they bubbled up. Jurisdictions, taxation, laws, mm. um, so forth are going to have to come in and, and expect more and more cases coming back to the Supreme Court saying, okay, what do we do about this case, right? Um, you mm -hmm. have somebody who has land title from their nation and some rancher says, that's my land. And mm. they say, yes, but we've been here for hundreds of years and you were here only for 150 years, right? And the court's got to decide yeah. what happens, right? You better yeah. believe there's going to be a disagreement. There'll be an appeals of the people who lose and it'll bubble its way up to the Supreme Court. We'll have to give further guidance as to what happened. But um, if, you really are, uh, if you are a First Nations peoples, this mm. is a landmark decision that no one's talking about. Except yeah. here. Yeah because we talk about yeah. important things. Um, uh, agree. Now, That's really there important. Are, <laughs> there are two other quick cases that I think that, that well, the Trump... Uh, that, uh, that let's get to those in a second. Down. The two things I want to point out real, really quickly. First of all, yeah, because I think one of the things is I think there's going to be a lot of land in those treaties that they were owed that they currently do not have. And I think that's going to become into contention. Mm. I think that's going to be very, very big. I do think the way it's probably going to shake out, mm. and, and this is going to be, I think, how it's going to have to shake out, but... It, and it, I'm glad because it gives them somewhat more power, but I don't think we're talking full reparations. I don't think we're talking fully because I think what's going to happen is no. all it said was that those treaties are still in effect. They can be renegotiated. Mm -hmm. And I think what's going to happen is mm -hmm. you're going to see those tribes or you're going to see the federal government saying, look, let's not litigate everything for the next, you know, 50 years. Uh, what can we do mm -hmm. so that, but what that means is these treaties are all of a sudden back on the table. And while the, um, nations aren't in a great bargaining position they're in a far better one than they were yesterday yes uh, and and understand you know i as elected official the cases i had to deal with were you know the more difficult ones were a property wants to do this to build this on their property the neighbors don't want yeah. that the committee might like that and the state might have something to say about it with the codes of codes you have all these it's never the case of there's a very clear right, and and it's and, and it's it's obvious. There's only one person contesting, and they get it yeah. right. It's, it's it's these overlapping set of rights and responsibilities mm. that are mm. that that are that are there. And so understand that even if you're volunteering at the local level, um, you as a commissioner can set, establish, help establish precedents, or help establish what happens with a particular development that's going to be in your community. And you have to balance the right between the people who live near it 
to the people who are the owners of the property. They're, 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 you have to consider mm -hmm. all those sort of things. And so when you're talking about property rights and, and nation rights and, and state rights and local rights, um, the courts are going to have to give us some guidance because there's going to be disagreements, but that's why we have courts to try and resolve that. But at least you can't sit there and say, yeah, go pound sound. <laughs> All right. So, what was uh, what was mm -hmm. the next one you wanted to uh, to hit? Well, the big the big thing, of course, is is regarding Trump's returns, right? There's multiple things. Trump's tax returns. It says, okay, it came back. Yeah, sorry, there was a reset. Um, My bad. Here we go. No worries. Um, and Trump's tax returns. And there are two big cases the Supreme Court said. Um, one of the things that they Can said you say was that again. I'm not sure is, everybody heard it. Yeah, so, yeah. So there are two big. There are two big cases that the Supreme Court decided that have to do with with Trump, but also to do with presidential powers. What, what the court said mm. was the president is not above the law. The president is not special, right? The administration, current administration was arguing this, yeah. this theory that as president, they could not be subjected to subpoenas to uh, they could not be subjected to investigation that, that they were special. And the court said mm -hmm. no. Even a seven to two decision, even the seven to two decision, the two dissenters said yes, the president is still subject to the law. They just disagreed with the, the, the degree of which. Um, hmm. We had a pretty good establishment of this in the Nixon case, where hmm. the, the Supreme Court, in a nine unanimous decision, said the president's not above the law and has to turn over the, the, the Watergate tapes, right? Um, they did another thing where, where Clinton tried to do the same thing. Um, not with taste, but with something else. And they said, no, president not above the law. And in this case, they affirmed again um, that we had a case of the district attorney in New York was, was um, had a, a grand jury investigation um, to consider indictments uh, relating to Donald Trump and his business dealings. And mm -hmm. there are some questions regarding that that be answered. They, they claim the evidence is in Trump's tax returns for an eight year period. And so they subpoenaed mm -hmm. some Trump's tax returns for the grand jury. Now, this doesn't mean that, 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 that if they get them, that they didn't publish in the New York Times. What it says is you have a, you have a grand jury that beats in secret. Here's the case of the, of the state and says, yes, we think you should indict him or not indict him on these charges, right? The grand jury will see mm. the evidence, see Trump's tax return, see what this what the district attorney is claiming Trump did or didn't do, and um, and uh, so and and what the, what the Supreme Court actually said was, you can't use the fact that you're president to say I don't have to, uh, I can ignore a grand jury, I can ignore a subpoena. Mm. Now, now they now he can't ignore. He can't be. He can't be. So I think the grounds for that is a recent finding that he he can't actually be prosecuted, right? Or he can't be. Is that you can't bring charges against him? Is that is that right? Well, so uh, no, it's 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 more a matter that that mm -hmm. that you that you can't say, President, I can't be subpoenaed. I can't be investigated. I can't yes, yes, have yes. a grand jury look at it. Right? You yeah. Yeah. now understand. Here's the important thing that that the beat is not getting correct. This does not mean that Trump has lost. What it means is that because, because mm -hmm. Courtney, if if a grand jury said we think you might have been engaged in uh, uh, drug dealings and you had this car in the south border of Texas and da 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 that whole all that whole you know scammer mm -hmm. thing, right? If they if they said that, and we want to have <laughs> records of every person you met with for the last twenty years, your wow. competent attorney would say, hey. That's a fishing expedition. You either have the evidence that she's involved in this thing or you don't. So, mm. so, so just, you, you can't just say, we want to subpoena your entire life to see if there's something you might've done. That's not allowed. So understand that, yeah. that Trump as a US citizen can say, that's not a proper subpoena. That's a fishing expedition. But, mm -hmm. but what the court said was, Trump can't say I'm president and therefore I don't have to, to, to answer the subpoena. So, so mm -hmm. just, so Trump right. has the same right before can, this grand yeah. jury as Courtney as you do, right? Mm. Now, understand the courts have fine tuned grand jury testimony pretty well. It's very rare that someone will 
be able to say successfully in court, no, this grand jury summons is improper. I don't have to do it. Particularly because the grand jury is mm-hmm. made in secret and, and the process, it, in fact, the grand jury is trying to even determine whether or not you're going to be even indicted, right? Um, yeah. so, so the chances of people getting away from having to answer, an, answer a grand jury summons or subpoena is, is very low because, because the, the, mm-hmm. the, the, they have to make a really egregious error to even be able to get to say the limit stuff. So what most people believe is that Trump will, that, 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 the, that the New York district attorney will be able to, to um, issue a subpoena. Trump's lawyers will object in the normal way, just like Courtney, you could object if they did that to you. And if it's not an mm-hmm. overly broad fishing expedition, if there's something very specific, because mm-hmm. they can go before a judge and steal chambers and say, your honor, we have pictures of Courtney in the Toyota automobile on the south border of Texas. And that is all right. That's, and, 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 and if we merely yeah. had her credit card uh, record. Wait, wait, I want to show... go back to that story. Hold on a sec. Hold on. That was, well, <laughs> this was getting interesting. I want to know what she was I, doing in Texas. Way, Hold on. This, 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 this is a com- that's a common scam that scammers do. I'm using this this thing. Obviously, she's not in the south border of Texas. And blah, blah, blah. Oh, so she was scamming but, somebody but, in the in the south border of Texas. I, this no, is really no, – okay, okay. I think we're going to – gonna. This <laughs> it's is a Nigerian spin, spin, spin thing. So, but I'm, I'm, uh, okay, so, so what I'm pointing out is that Trump can't use I'm president. Therefore, I don't have to uh, uh, respond to a subpoena. Mm. You, Nicholas, you, according to myself – our lawyers could object to subpoena undergrounds, and as long as subpoena is not ridiculous, mm-hmm. we'll we'll lose, and subpoena will be will be issued. Now, mm-hmm. this is not going to happen instantaneously. For you right? after this, <laughs> right? Because this is not going to oh, happen. We all got questions gonna happen, for you after this, Landon. I'm on where you. It's not going to happen <laughs> instantaneous, right? Um, because the district attorney has to then reissue the subpoena, and the. Trump's lawyers will have to have a, a call for a hearing, have arguments, have oral arguments, have counter arguments from the state, back and forth, mm-hmm. back and forth thing in the land of Covidia, which is going to take even longer. Um, it's mm-hmm. unlikely that by the end, by 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 election day, that this this grand jury will even be able to see the evidence. It is also very unlikely yeah. that Trump will will be able to prevent the grand jury from seeing his tax returns. The question becomes, what will so, the grand jury think? Is the case of mm-hmm. district attorney enough that they can then go to trial? Mm-hmm. We'll see. So the, uh, there is a question in the live chat of like, Trump and everyone else submits their taxes and their tax returns to the government. And then he, I guess he was asking like, why doesn't the government already have access to those just because they're the ones who receive them? And I would, uh, I would think that that's because the those are like private with the IRS or something. Yes, yes, there there are very strict laws. The IRS cannot go and hand out willy nilly people's tax returns. Yeah, even um, even very, very 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 strict regulations on it. And part of the thing yeah. that the federal government realizes in the case that that case law that 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 is that is there and the legislative intent is to say, if if you if you um, if, if you the IRS start leaking tax returns to everyone, then people will be afraid to file taxes. I mean, mm. the federal government would like you to pay taxes even if what you're being taxed is not what they like. They still want the taxes, right? Um, mm-hmm. And and so if other if the police could come in to say IRS, we want to look through all the tax returns to see if anyone's filing taxes because they're doing something that we think is naughty, right? They can't do that. Right? There's yeah. very, very, very powerful protections. Yeah. But I understand, Courtney, what the court said was your tax returns are just as protected as Trump's. You are just as protected from improper grand jury summons as Trump. But Trump doesn't have special get out of grand jury subpoena things just because he's president. In fact, they said but, he's mm. like any other citizen. Just because this ties into yeah. topics that we've hit several times, I do want to quickly, I, is the grounds for that, I, I suspect that the grounds 
for uh, why that is is because until he's impeached mm. and we, because we've discussed impeachment so i think this ties very nicely into the into our previous topics until he's impeached mm -hmm. you can't actually indict him on anything else so was, well, was the a, grounds a... that was the grounds that wait ah. why, you, how could you do a grand jury for somebody you can't indict well but but here's the thing where where what the the, the new york is 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 stating that this is a crime before Trump became president that they are investigating allegedly, mm. right? Mm. And mm. and so this process, they need to even be able to investigate it to even determine whether or not there's charges filed. You can have argument yeah. over or not um, uh, what can happen as a consequence of those charges. Understand as well that even if Trump were to pardon himself as president, that just has no bearing on state charges. That's only bearing on federal. Mm. It, would either, it would have wow, to be the so governor of New York. So <laughs> this is part of this whole civics thing, right? Yeah. It's 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 and it's and it's a well, it's a it's a, it's a district attorney of, uh, of New York that is that is that is uh, involved in here. So for what does it mean for people who are not Trump and are not the grand jury and mm. not the district attorney? Um, you probably won't hear much of what's happening until maybe next year. This this process is gonna grind on slowly. Trump's lawyers will, on behalf of Trump, have the right to to object to the judge issuing the 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 subpoena for the tax records. They'll have a they'll schedule a hearing. They'll have oral arguments. The the, the state will give its counter arguments. They'll object to the state's arguments and give their arguments and then they they will have uh, counter arguments. And then the judge will will have a a a meeting to bring people together. We'll argue some more. Judge will go in consideration. The judge will then make a ruling. If it turns out that one of the parties doesn't like the ruling and thinks there's an error, they can appeal to to the uh, the appeals court. An appeals court might say there's an error and fix it, and the government could appeal or Trump could appeal, and it goes to the mm. federal district court, and eventually could go to the federal it's back to the Supreme Court again but for a different reason, right? If Trump's lawyers tried to say, he's president, you can't do that. The courts can sit there and say, summary judgment, no, we, that's already been decided, Supreme Court case, done, right? It's, 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 it's yeah. that, that, that Trump's tax returns, there, and this is a process, when, if Trump leaves office, right? This process could take years investigating at the grand jury level and may, may not even come to trial. If it comes to trial, let's say the grand jury says, yes, there's enough evidence to indict Trump on whatever the district attorney thinks he did. Then, of course, the question will become that the Trump's lawyers will want to seal the, the court, right? They don't want to, to have the information coming out because they'll argue that Trump's reputation could be in, impugned. If, particularly mm -hmm. if, the, if the trial, if all the stuff comes on trial and, and, the, and, and the jury's found them not guilty. Uh, I know okay. you're laughing, he's, but this is he's the way paid the for hookers. Work. He's paid for hookers with a business check out of the while well, in the actual uh, and his okay. I'm okay, okay. They can argue what they want to. I'm just saying, yes. But his, his understand, reputation. understand. You don't have to have a valid case to go to court. <laughs> That's what the court's for. Yeah, he's lucky for that. Okay, please continue. So, so, well, so, yeah. so, 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 the important people to understand is that 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 the president is not above the law and can't use "I'm president" as a reason to ignore a subpoena. And the court said that even the justices that said no still agreed with that. But it does not mean that Trump's tax returns are being released by the district attorney, right? Um, it's possible mm -hmm, that mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. could decide to indict. It goes to trial, and Trump is convicted. Maybe that by that time, if Trump is convicted of stuff, then there will be an argument over whether or not the court records are sealed. Because sometimes, even if you're guilty, there may be reasons to seal them. Let's say you're guilty and you and you uh, might uh, damage the reputation of somebody who's not involved. The court records could be sealed. Yeah. Right. But 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 presuming that they they're not able to seal it, then the actual court proceedings will become public, and Trump's tax returns will become public for that era. We'll see. Mm. There's another case that happened. And this case is that Congress also went a subpoena um, in, in two grounds. Um, there's a law on the books that allows the chairman of the, of the Senate Committee on Taxation or the chairman of the House Committee on Taxation to look at any tax return. 
And the law is very clear about that. And so Congress wanted to look at tax returns. And they even gave a reason because they knew they would say, well, why do you want to look at it? And so there's all these various reasons that have been, you can see, you can read the press about the various things that Congress says he might have done or not done with regards to monuments clause and business dealings and, and payments, alleged payments to foreign this and that, right? So Congress is also state says, of course, we have the investigations. We have this law. We also want to um, improve the laws to 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 consider legislation to make um, the affairs of public officials more visible to the public, and we need to get in more information. So Congress had this broad set of things, and and what the court said was, okay, um, we think there are some errors that the courts did. The courts all the way up to the Supreme Court said Trump loses, Trump loses, Trump loses. Supreme Court says, well. Hold on, <laughs> there's some issues here. Um, send it back to the lower courts to fix these these issues. Now it may be very big, very easy for the lower courts to fix those issues. Mm-hmm. But the thing is that the Congress can't say, we won, give us our taxes, give us the tax returns. What they what the court said was send it back to the lower courts for reconsideration given these Supreme Court directions. And so that's going to wind its way through court. Um, it's likely that eventually Congress, if they choose to push it, might want to get those returns eventually. But did Trump win? Did Trump lose? Well, he won in the fact that that the court didn't sit there and say, immediately release his, his returns. Court said he can't use his status as president to not give out the returns, but there are other issues. Mm-hmm, Courts mm-hmm. fix those issues. Right. So this so is another reason why the, the motivation Congress won't get the tax returns for this before the election. Go ahead. Yeah. So the the motivation for having something public, it seems like it wouldn't be really necessary other than like everybody's curiosity and gossip factor. But I think the, the biggest thing for the value of something like that coming public would be for the free press to, you know, hold a government official accountable in, you know, the eyes of the people for us to have information about who was in office and what they were capable of doing and the kind of power they wielded with their interests of, you know, that show up on tax returns. So there's that. But, but understand, I understand that there's a lot of, and 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 this is where we're getting into now and and to 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 to, to politics as opposed to you know legal arguments, but but there are people that are making claims that Trump may have improperly used funds uh, in campaigns. He may have been engaged in business dealings with, particularly with foreign governments, um, uh, before he was president. That he may have have lied about his his net worth in order to get loans fraudulently. There may be insurance issues. There's claims of well, taxation I, where uh, there are claims that where he said, I'm poor, mm. I'm poor, and therefore uh, I don't owe any taxes, and I'm rich, and therefore um, I can keep my money. And 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 so there's all these claims, again, that, the, that, 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 that Congress is looking into and the courts are looking into. The thing the court has mm. told Trump is, you cannot use the fact you're yeah. president as a as a way to right. ignore this. But it still is a legal matter that has to go through mm-hmm. the courts. The the case the, of the grand jury for and the and the New York uh, New York prosecutor is that it goes through the continues to go through the grand jury process. The court didn't well, say I, I Trump's guilty. After that. They said start. Right. After that, no, no, yeah, course, but I was I was the, just saying I was just saying after that in terms of like sealing the documents of what the ruling is and all of that. Um, yeah, and that's, and it's, it's, so it's, it's possible, just, but, but, but if he's guilt found guilty, it's unlikely. If he's innocent, he will certainly say, don't release the, the testimony in my, in my trial. I've been found not guilty. Do you not, you're not mm-hmm. found innocent. You're found not guilty. I found not guilty. And therefore, if you release the testimony, you'll do any damage. And the court will probably say, yeah, you've been found not guilty. So we'll seal these records and, and not, but if you're found guilty, mm. then the issue what you've been found guilty of it becomes public. You cannot have a a mm-hmm. a, a secret sentence. Um, they sometimes, mm. however, if your things are regarding national security, they can steal certain parts of it. But um, 
again, mm. what is the issue with the New York prosecutor are Trump's taxes before he became president. There's nothing in those taxes that can sit there and say, I deducted $1.57 for a talk with this particular leader about nuclear disarmament. Right. No. This no, is, no, yeah. is pre-election stuff. Now, the case of, right, of, no, of, yeah. the, of the House um, subpoenaing, there as well have a similar thing where they say, we have legislation we want to do to, to, to make the public officials more accountable. We also have concerns about mm -hmm. Things that might be impeachable offenses, because again, Trump can be impeached again. Be impeached more <laughs> than once. Um, yeah. and, and 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 so understand now, if Trump is not reelected, there may be some people in Congress that say, "Okay, enough is enough. Move on to something else." There may be somebody say, "No, mm. no, we don't have this happen again." And so the question will be whether Trump wins or loses as to whether that will change interest in that. Um, I think eventually mm. what the courts have shown is that that your tax returns can be released if they are if if they are part of a criminal you know uh, if, that that if, if you if you're engaged in criminal activity right you can't hide them merely because mm. you're 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 criminal mm -hmm. um, so if Trump That's is like actually guilty of claim. things then there, but 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 I mean, it's not a case of Trump testifying uh, against himself. Mm -hmm. If if let's say right, exactly, if you commit yeah. tax fraud, yep. then then yeah. the taxes are evidence, and when you, mm -hmm. if you're found guilty, the evidence is now public. As an example, yeah, right. If 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 you were to uh, decide that you got a loan for fraudulent purposes and you were you're basically you know fiscal mm -hmm. malfeasance. There's crime against that. That mm -hmm. can be done. So all these things can be investigated, plus and mom's clauses and, and everything else. So you can so you can see the long list of stuff that that, that people are claiming. <laughs> allegedly. Yeah. Again. Allegedly. Mm -hmm. Allegedly. Right? So right, right, right. so um so what did the court do? The court said, sorry, President, you don't have a special get out of jail free card just because you're president. You don't have a special mm -hmm. ignore the subpoena card just because you're president. But mm -hmm. courts, district attorney, yeah. blah, 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 send it back to you. Yeah to do the normal processing right um so we're coming and, up on two hours so now <laughs> i would think i would think my, my prediction is it is unlikely you the general public will hear about trump's tax return details unless someone were right. to illegally leak them before the election mm. right after the election i think it's very likely that the grand jury will see them Mm -hmm. I will think. I mean, I, I feel like I'm a, like a 99 percent chance the country will see them. And after the election, if Congress still thinks it's important, they will probably eventually get to see Trump's tax returns. And mm -hmm. what happens after there is another uh, is another discussion. Mm. All right. Well, um, and I, I I definitely think there's a lot to discuss there. And there is one thing that you know I we. Didn't get a chance to discuss on in time. I'd like to, and I, I think we we hit on it, uh, but I, I think uh, we're we're not going to be able to do it tonight. But was also like um, uh, because uh, Mueller actually worked very closely with uh, the uh, state's attorney, uh, state's attorney district, yes. or whatever, uh, so that if Trump tried to to do an end run by pardoning, he would actually still not be immune because the states had their their thing. But that's I think that's that, uh, that's, that's a really important thing because. Because the New York has, the New York attorneys have everything that Miller has, and and, and Miller is also, but they were they were they were they were recording, and even if Trump pardons himself, yep. he cannot block the the state of New York. Even if he moves mm -hmm. to the state of Florida for residency, he is still answerable to to you know the state of New York. Um, you know what would Trump have to do? If he leaves office and he wants to avoid prosecution in the state of of New York, um, well, I, well I, I, I think we're going to have to put a little bit on he, it. He could he could skip town and and go to a country that doesn't have extradition. But apart from that, uh, I think he'll have his day in court at some point. Who knows what the courts will do as a result of that? 
Dear Dayton? Lord, I hope so. Dear Lord, I hope so. All right. Well, um, uh, Landon, thank you very much for joining us. I do hope, uh, and for those of you who, who are here for the first time, uh, this is part of a, a regular series uh, that we've been doing, and we're going to have Landon back on. I think our next one is going to be exclusively on the, on the Supreme Court uh, on civics, and I, I've been uh, immensely enjoying this series, so I do hope you guys uh, will join us for the next one. We also have... Uh, Oh dear Lord! And I was—I was gonna—I've I was gonna, I've, I've spaced what the uh, <laughs> calendar is. I know we've got, um, as I mentioned at the top of the show, we've got uh, Dr. Richard Carrier and uh, Ozzy coming on. Actually, I do think it is next week to discuss uh, philosophy of religion. We're also going to have on uh, Ozzy mm. to discuss Hume's problem of induction, which I think is going to be fun. Mm. And we got a couple other things. I do think wow. we got to try to get uncivil law back on to discuss some of these issues. Landon is going to be back I'm to discuss. I'm just going to have to smile and nod at that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, 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 I promise we will find a way to get you involved. I have a case of a woman in Texas at a car yeah. dealership that I think is going to be is going to interest you uh, that we will be uh, yeah. discussing. But at any rate. Um, so, uh, thank you all for joining us. If you like the show, please do, uh, like, and subscribe. That means a lot. It really helps us out. Uh, Courtney's, my contact information is in the description. Oh, I just realized Oversight Landon's is not, but I will uh, add his info in there. But until then, thank you all for joining us. I, uh, thank you, Landon, for, uh, coming back. Thank you very much. And thank you, Courtney, as well, for excellent questions, as usual. And and just for the record, Courtney was does not have a car on the south border of Texas. Oh, God. So. Okay. So there's clearly, unfortunately, there are some issues here we have not had time to resolve. We will be getting to them. Trust me when I say I am very interested in getting to the bottom of these allegations, which admittedly I have absolutely no idea what they are. But um, if it causes embarrassment to Courtney, I'm willing to try to find out. Uh, thank you all for joining us. And <laughs> she is going to nail me later. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to start taking it easy because she smacked me upside the head uh, about 45 minutes ago and she'll do it again. But um, uh, until, until then, I'm going to get away with everything I can. And then it's just like, oh, whoops. I don't know where the host went. Um, but Courtney... <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, thank you all for joining us. Yeah, I'm, I'm going I'm to keep that off now because I think Courtney's going to, yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Thank you all, and we look forward to uh, seeing you again soon. <laughs> Bye. Bye.